just a little follow up that aged coffees I, I can't imagine do farmers actually invest no. in the in the aging no. process No, it's not farmers. They've sold their coffee. No, no, this is that exporter. These are middlemen, exporters. The middlemen yes. are usually in Sumatra. They're the people who collect the coffee. They're sometimes called collectors. Collectors, So okay. They collect the coffees from the small producers and take it on the first stage of this wet hauling process. Exporters are key to Sumatra coffees. They, they often, the best Sumatra coffees are, the exporters are managing and working with this supply chain that goes from the small producers to the middlemen mills that are up in the mountains and finally to the port. So that process, how it's managed, really decides whether it's a, a very good Sumatra or a kind of a musty, skanky Sumatra. Exporters, and some of them are very idealistic, working with the producers and the supply chain to improve, raise prices and improve lives. Yeah, those, that would be the exporters who are putting it in the warehouses. Is it a lost art? Here's why I say that. I rarely see aged coffees anymore, and I remember seeing when I first got interested in coffee, more of them. I wouldn't say a lot more, but I would say I, it was not unusual to find it. Or is it just there are other options now? I have no idea. I think tastes have changed, too. I think we've gotten used to now, at the, the elite high end of the, of the coffee industry or business in the United States, these very fine, bright, clean, complexly sweet and fruit and floral dominated coffees. So this quality of earthiness, earthy waywardness that you might get with a Sumatra is, uh, is not as popular anymore. But let me just say one other thing, too, is that probably when, when you and I first became interested in coffee, a lot of the aged coffees were just coffees that uh, in Indonesia they forgot about. They put in a warehouse and just lost, tr I think they yeah. lost track of them. Because Mr. Pete, Alfred yeah. Pete, he, you know, yeah. he came originally, came to California from Indonesia where he'd been in the coffee business and he loved these these inadvertent aged coffees. I know. So he had his, I think he had his scouts in Indonesia going around, you know, trying to, to find them and maybe encouraging people to let them sit for another few years or something. I don't know, but, but that's typical of, it, uh, that, of the aged process. In other words, that the, the exporters and importers are really involved in the process. But his, his aged coffees, he used to have aged Sulawesi, aged, yeah, oh, aged Java. Yeah. Those days are gone. I think nobody does that anymore. Maybe, no. I have no idea really where he found them, but I know that he had people looking for them. He still has aged Sumatra. Yeah, well, but the aged Sumatra, I'm most certain, is done in this, this formal way that I'm talking about. Aged Sumatra, even though it's a kind of a contrived process, can produce very, very fine coffees distinctive but it all depends it's garbage in and garbage out so if they if they yeah. if the Sumatras that go in are really fine wet hauled coffees they'll age beautifully if they go in as kind of musty dirty Sumatras they'll come out even worse I suppose but the good thing I think about the aging process is nobody wants to put a poor quality Sumatra and spend all that money for keeping it in the warehouse for five years. They're going to make sure that the Sumatra goes in as a good one. Well, isn't it against, I'm not turn, trying to turn this into an economics program, isn't it natural uh, in our modern thinking to think about getting your profit as quickly as possible in, in any product? And, and that's And that goes against, flies in the face of the idea of aging something is to is to, it will increase in value, and it's still a risk. 
because again, it may. Uh, I I think there's a probably more than a third option out there. I'm sure, but one option is that you put a fine coffee in, and sometimes something goes wrong. I don't know, imagine what it would be. I'm not that knowledgeable about the process, but there's always the risk yeah. that it, it it doesn't fulfill what you're hoping but, for. But if you look at the at modern uh, economics, you there there's a a privileging of of aged old like old wines old brandies old mm-hmm. bourbon whiskies so there's a very prominent uh, model in other beverages and so i'm surprised from that point of view why you know aged coffees haven't gotten more um, more uh, popular but it, you're right, it's expensive. On the other hand, if you, if you have a clientele that recognizes this as something special, even if it doesn't taste that great, they recognize it as something special, then you'll have a market for it. And I don't think that's true in coffee. Maybe it will be. Because, because the interest in coffee is more, in high-end coffee is more on the, the, the producer not the exporter, you know what the producer does, and connecting with the producer, and and the very fresh crop coffee that's very bright, and melodic, and and floral and fruit and so on, rather than these, you know, deep, old, resonant kinds of uh, of tastes. And and driving the point bluntly to this coffee. Today, is this is this worth you know someone, and I guess I'm asking us both of us, is this coffee has an aged coffee in it? Is it does it? Do you think it makes a difference in the blend? Oh, of course, that, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I we don't know. I mean, we because wet hulled coffees vary so wildly depending on how the supply chain has handled that that process. I've tasted brilliant aged Sumatras, straight aged Sumatras, but again, they're expensive because you have already good coffees put in a warehouse for several years. We'll see. Maybe they'll, somebody will discover them. That's about all I <laughs> say. I mean, the richness of the coffee world would be, would be expanded if there were more focus, perhaps, on aged coffees. But uh, there has to be a market of people who pay well. I mean, Martinez is known for high-priced, and, you know, just the whole resonance around the name, too, of the, of the cigar uh, company and, uh, and, and, and Cuba and uh, that kind of uh, tradition, I guess, of... Uh, of Caribbean uh, resonance. <laughs> no, anyhow, stop yeah, me yeah, before no, I, I get I, carried I, away I, too much. But anyhow, Martinez, the, the brand Martinez, is in a good position to take advantage of the uh, age. But I, I've had, for instance, local, big, lo- wonderful local ro- roaster, Equator Coffee. I don't know if you know Equator in mm-hmm. the Bay Area. Yes. I you know, do. In Marin County. Uh, they have done aged Sumatras. Ted Stitcher, the, the uh, head of coffee equator, chooses aged some aged Sumatras sometimes, and uh, they're brilliant. The ones I've had have been very good, and I've had them from other roasters. I can't remember who. Yeah, that's part of the reason I, I selected this one. I was interested in the uh, yeah. aged component. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.